A war has broken out in Warhammer City. Use the Power Sword to defeat the demons. Hey! Assemble and paint the Power Sword. Hello everybody, my name is Guest Goose and today we're doing a Power Sword tutorial. Now I wouldn't be a Warhammer YouTuber if it wasn't for a Power Sword tutorial or an Ultramarines tutorial. So um, this is my pennies worth of doing so, so let's jump right into it. Starting off with the base paints, you will need Kalidor Sky and Abaddon Black. For the layer, you'll need White Scar, Temple Guard Blue. And then lastly, you'll need Nihilic Oxide and the other paints now they're just for the hilt of the handle but those first five are all you need just to kind of get the sword going now there was a bit of cheeky practice going on and was working on this terminator this is the result this is the power sword that i will be showing you how to do today i'm really proud of this guy but he does not matter right now only this man matters we are gonna get you looking snazzy with a new power sword as a wise man once said, smash that like button and subscribe. Okay, so we have him in hand and we need to be patient because we are going to be putting a coat of Kalidor Sky along both sides of the blade and just in smooth coats. So two to three smooth coats is all you need. So I've just shaken this pot here and I'm going to wet my brush just a little bit. I'll take a small dollop on that and just place it there. I'm mixing it on the actual pal. You can see the rest of the practice here, but just smooth layers. So it shouldn't be too bad going over this McCrag blue, but just as small and as thin as you can. I'm taking my time, not rushing myself. And now for this side of the sword, again, just thin coats. So now you can see the color difference in the Kalidor sky compared to the McCrag blue, which is this is primed with. And now on to our second thin coat. Now, and we'll leave that to dry. Now, and while he dries, I just wanted to show you this in case you haven't seen it. But, <laughs> look at him, look at him go. Next, with Temple Guard Blue. Now, this is when you need to be the most patient because this is the, the process that decides what is your power sword going to look like. So get a very small amount, like this tiny dollop here. And when I mean water it down, I mean drown it. So I am putting loads in here and thinning it down. So that's three dollops of the water. So you're getting this kind of consistency. And now before I put this on, we need to figure out how this is going to go on. So see that line there on that sword. How we're going to do that is... So see the way this is split in the middle. You have dark and you have light. And then you have light and then you have dark. Um, we need to do that way, but this is a bit different now because the sword shape is different That means we need to be a lot more creative in where we're placing this so I'm gonna place this first one Here just at the very tip of the blade now. I'm gonna start I'm gonna have my line here And I'm just gonna slowly bring this out towards the tip of the sword And shall bring that back to about Right there and just glide that along and just it's all about keeping its boundaries and um, there's that boundary there we'll just leave it and keep that shape of the sword and um, so now that that's there we're gonna do one on the opposite side so around about here in the middle let's just take this here and just guide the brush along paint in those recesses because we definitely don't want to miss this just be careful going on that line if you make the mistake, that's okay. You can just go over again with Kalidor Sky. As you see, I've made a small mistake there while going through there, but that is okay. So that's first layer. Like, you're just getting your foundations down. Now that the first layer is dry, we're not going to start up here again. We are going to start about here this time. So you're just slowly building that up as you go along. 
And then same with here, just don't go the whole way this time. And that just repeats each time until you slowly make that, that fade into it. Just trust the process, honestly. It may look a bit silly now, but as soon as we get the Abaddon Black in to contrast the blue, it looks spot on. That's that next layer in. Third layer down. And again, not the whole way, just enough to allow it to look like it's glowing. Now, fourth and final layer, or at least should be the final layer. Building that up correctly. And lastly, with the recesses in here. Now, so if you want to kind of merge the two sides, you can get a very light dollop of the watered down paint and you just do small specks, small specks divided on each side just to kind of cut it up. Now, if you do specks that are too bright, that is okay because we're going over anyway with a bad and black. So just leave it a bit like this. And as I said before, if you make any mistakes, you can easily go over them again with Calidor Sky. Onto a bad and black. Yeah, so just the same story with the anon oil. Just water it down and bring it down to just about that consistency here. And now on the opposite ends, starting up from that point, just fill it in, drag the paint out. No, I actually might have too much on this, but we can make this work. Okay, starting from the furthest point, and bringing it back. You see this motion I am, I'm flicking it away. Flicking it away from the center because I don't want it to pool here, because you'll just get black dots. Um, so, kind of brush it back. Make sure and brush it back so you don't have it pooling in places you want pooling. So let me thin that down and just do the same. And just blend that in there. It's a gorgeous mixture once you get it going. But again, just take your time. And uh, same with the black dots to kind of merge them in. And next layer of a bad and black. Now be very... Um, Careful with this, don't put too much on because the black will sink in the color and take a lot more than much needed. And then starting with the black on this side, and that's pretty much the black step done. You really, really don't need that much for the black paint, so you can just kind of put it on sparingly. This is our result so far. Now, I'm just going over with Calador Sky, just putting it in the middle again very lightly just do a final bit of blending putting the dots on into the black so it's not completely taking the color so looking like this now next up nylic oxide so again same story grab a bit not too much you have this now it's already a watered down consistency but we're going to water it down even more so it's about that much it's very very transparent this is going on the very, very tip of the blade, just giving it a slight huey green glow. And it's just the one layer required. You can put further layers, but um, I made the mistake last time by putting in too many, but um, if you like this look better, then just keep going, put more layers on. But I'm happy with this, so I'm gonna leave it at that with the nylic oxide. Now, next up, once that's dried off, grab more nylic oxide, but this time you're not thinning it down. Instead, we're going to sharpen our brush and let it be as it is on the palette. And just kind of glide it along as if you were going to do edge highlighting. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So very, very lightly, just go on the edge of the sword, just highlighting it with the nylic oxide on all of the edges. Now, this may take two coats, but that's okay. The the paint dries fairly quickly anyway. So for this part here, you want to be very, very delicate. So you're gonna follow the line that is on whatever sword you're painting. Yeah, this is a very easy step to mess up, so don't worry. My hands are shaking doing this because my brush is actually curved. And so it makes this a lot more difficult. But um, 
by doing this you allow yourself to have just a slight fade there so once we go over this with white scar it becomes a lot more glowy finally once all of that is dried we can move on to the white scar stage we're going to be edge highlighting and taking our time once again thinning it down but not to a liquidy kind of um, texture same story as the last step I'm going to gently go over all of the edges with this and this immediately brings life into the blade Again, being very delicate just specifically on this part of the blade other blades shouldn't be too hard I think it's just this exact one it's just a weirdly placed um, area so now it should be looking just like this the next step we're gonna still be using white scar just do smaller lines to give it almost a shimmer so anywhere along the edges I can leave just a straight line like so, and I'm keeping them all at the same angle. All of them need to be at the same angle. So there are all my lines completed and the sword looks amazing, but still not yet as we have the main part of the sword to paint. So that is the tutorial segment of this video complete. Um, I didn't expect this video to be as long as it was, so I thought it'd be around five minutes, but here we are. So this is part of the video where I ask you to like and subscribe. A lot of work goes into these videos and I know the Warhound Titan video, i said it so many times. It's, first off it's refreshing to do like a smaller model video. Um, just the, the Titan does take a lot of time, it's a very very big project for, I actually did a test piece, Just give me one moment. This is the shin pad that I've done, and so this is the Legio Furians colour scheme I was on about. Um, I have this one done, and this took like two hours, two hours for this itty bit, and it's not actually finished yet, so you do the math. It's going to take a long time to make that video, but it's being made nonetheless. But without further ado, here's the complete model, and here's what yours should be looking like. And here we are, the completed piece. I'm very satisfied with this. I'm happy knowing I have a new sergeant for my army. And this guy isn't feeling so lonely anymore with a cool painted sword. So once again, folks, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.